The Sufis in Saudi Arabia faced a challenging time triggered by a fatwa. They were accused of spreading superstitions and polytheism. Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Sufi Paths. I'm Olivia, your host today. I am replacing Jane, and today we have a fascinating topic to delve into. Sufism in Saudi Arabia. Joining me is a dear colleague, Adam, an expert on Islamic history and comparative religion studies. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for having me. Let's begin by exploring the characteristics of the area of Hijaz in Saudi Arabia and its rich history. It has been an open platform for various intellectual, doctrinal and sectarian trends within the Islamic world for centuries. Can you tell us more about the significance of this region? Absolutely, Olivia. The Hijaz hold a special place in the hearts of Muslims worldwide. With the holy sites of Mecca and Medina, it is a spiritual epicenter. Over time, scholars and Sufis from diverse backgrounds migrated to this region, leading to rich social, cultural and intellectual interactions in the region. I understand that various Sufi paths and practices exist in Hijaz. Can you share some insights into this aspect? Certainly, Olivia. Sufism, with its emphasis on purification and ethical conduct, has been an integral part of the region. Despite the term itself being less commonly used, the essence and practices of Sufism remain present and influential. According to historical sources, Sufism entered Saudi Arabia through Yemen, specifically through the influential Sheikh al-Balawi. Under his influence, the al-Balawi order spread, and its followers expanded throughout the kingdom. Other orders, such as the Rifai, the Shadeli, and the Tijani orders followed. The Hijaz has witnessed the emergence of numerous Sufi orders. For instance, in Mecca alone, it is said that there are over 40 Sufi orders and 300 hospices serving followers from all corners of the Islamic world, particularly during the Hajj season. It's incredible to think about the diversity and vibrancy of Sufi practices in the Hijaz. But it seems that these Sufi orders went beyond mere spiritual gatherings. Can you shed light on their multifaceted roles? Absolutely, Olivia. Over time, these Sufi orders transformed into much more than places of remembrance. They became centers of education and social spaces. Additionally, they served as shelters for the poor. Their influence extended beyond the holy cities of Mecca and Medina encompassing pilgrim routes, seaports, and even mountainous regions like Asia. That's truly inspiring, Adam. It speaks volumes about the unity and harmony that Sufism fostered in the Hijaz. Now, as we explore further, I'm curious about the influence of these Sufi orders beyond the holy city. Could you shed some light on their impact on the surrounding regions? Certainly, Olivia. The influence of these Sufi orders extended far beyond the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. They played a significant role in the development and shaping of cities along the pilgrimage routes such as Jeddah and Yanbu. Their presence was also felt in coastal towns and mountainous regions reaching as far as Asir. The teachings and practices of the various Sufi orders left a lasting impression on the cultural and spiritual fabric of these regions. It's incredible to see how the Hijazi society's embrace of diversity and interaction with people from various schools of thought shaped the practice of Sufism. Can you share some examples of how this openness manifested within Sufi circles? Certainly, Olivia. In the Hijaz, it was not uncommon to find students following a specific juristic school while seeking spiritual guidance from a Sufi sheikh belonging to a different school. This harmony between different paths and practices highlights the spirit of tolerance and acceptance that prevailed within the Sufi community. In the Hijaz, Sufism placed great emphasis on moral and ethical refinement known as taskia. The Sufis viewed this process as a means of purifying hearts and nurturing a culture of absolute tolerance. Their practice was deeply rooted in the concept of alisan, the pursuit of kindness in one's relationship with God and fellow human beings. This commitment to moral values allowed them to navigate a path 
of moderation and embracing what is known as moderate Sufism. So, by focusing on moral and ethical values, the Sufis in the Hijaz were able to create a space where various Islamic schools of thought could intersect and interweave without conflict. This approach must have fostered a positive atmosphere within the Hijazi society. Absolutely, Olivia. The moderate approach of Sufism in the Hijaz contributed to harmonious coexistence among different segments of society, including those with liberal and non-religious inclinations. This unique dynamic sets the Hijaz apart from other regions and demonstrates the power of tolerance and understanding. After all, Sufism has always sought to deepen the spiritual connection between individuals and the divine, emphasizing love, devotion, and selflessness. Indeed, Adam. With the rise of radical movements, many people have sought solace in the spirituality and moderation of Sufism. It has provided a counter-narrative to the extremist ideologies propagated by these groups. Absolutely, Olivia. Sufis in Saudi Arabia play a significant role in promoting purification and ethical conduct. Through their scholars and followers, they actively spread the teachings of Sufism and contribute to the spiritual enrichment of the community. By promoting love, tolerance and acceptance, Sufis play an essential role in fostering peace and harmony within society. Adam, I'm curious to know how many Sufi followers are estimated to be in Saudi Arabia? That's an interesting question, Olivia. The number of Sufi followers in the kingdom is estimated to be quite substantial, ranging from 500,000 to 1 million seekers, and possibly even more. However, we do not have any official statistical data to determine the exact number of Sufi followers. How did Sufis in Saudi Arabia dealt with the rise of Wahhabi and Salafi ideas in recent times? The Sufis in Saudi Arabia faced a challenging time triggered by a fatwa issued almost four decades ago by the official religious institution. They were accused of spreading superstitions and polytheism. They even had to deal with baseless accusations of being Shia. It was definitely a tough blow for the Sufi community. As a result of this severe fatwa, a full-blown campaign against Sufism was launched in Saudi Arabia by the official religious current and their loyal followers from the traditional extreme movements. They went all out, banning celebrations of the Prophet's birthday and cracking down on various Sufi religious practices. It was a difficult time indeed. What's even more surprising is the response, or rather, the lack thereof from the Saudi authorities. Instead of standing up against this mistreatment faced by the Sufis, they chose to remain silent. Why, you might ask. Well, it seems the Saudi authorities were reluctant to jeopardize their cooperation with those extreme religious groups, as they found themselves in need of their support in certain domestic and foreign situations. Now, Adam, what is your opinion on the statements made by the ruling family regarding extremist ideologies and Saudi Arabia's commitment to return to moderate thinking? Olivia, the statements have brought immense joy to Sufis in the kingdom. It is a powerful affirmation that there were indeed extremist and radical ideologies present, which were freely practiced without opposition or prevention in the past. Previously, Sufism and Sufis were not actively supported and were often viewed as a minority. But this perception should change because Sufis are known for their moderation, peacefulness and commitment to spiritual growth. Thanks, Adam, for all the insights. That brings us to the end of today's enlightening episode. We hope you enjoyed this engaging discussion on Sufism in Saudi Arabia. Join us next time as we embark on another captivating adventure through the realm of spirituality. Until then, take care and stay curious.